ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President and CEO, Volkswagen Group of America, Scott Keo. the bureaucrats, so we're not going to welcome them anymore. And obviously the politicians, I think we've done a, a job of welcoming you. I actually want to welcome and focus on the most important people in the room. We are here, this factory is here, our entire company is here, is due to the people who make the magic happen and make these cars. So to everyone here in this plant, a big heart. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's get on with that. But you know, if you look at Volkswagen, uh, frankly, it's never been an easy journey here in America. But I think anything great, anything fantastic requires hard work. Now I think you all know this photo, 1949, New York City. This is when the first Beetle arrived in America. It's when our company came to America nearly 70 years ago. And it got off to an auspicious start. 1949, we sold two vehicles. Now there's been a lot of debate. Some people say, those two guys who were the first importers purchased the vehicles, so they purchased their own cars. Some guys say it was their beloved mothers who purchased the cars just to make their sons feel good. But whatever it is, those cars got on the road. And of course, if you fast forward to where we are with Volkswagen in America now, frankly, we've come quite a long way, contributing to obviously this great country. 126,000 jobs between our ports, between our dealers, between our technicians, between our factory, and obviously everything we do at the headquarters. 28 billion in economic output. Quite proud of this, and obviously we want to continue to see these numbers grow and grow in this marketplace. Now, if you look specifically here, obviously in Chattanooga, in Tennessee, you know the story quite well. Since 2011, we've been making Passats in this region. The first customer of Passat, April 18th, 2011. And many of you know, we've made a few more Passats since then, nearly 730 thousand vehicles built to date in this magazine. And I think no one knows more than us, the second generation is rolling down the line as we speak. A real labor of love by all of you, and we can't wait to get that car on the market and get that car in front of Americans and the consumer in this marketplace. Now specifically to this plant, as you all know, we've invested $2.3 billion here in Chattanooga. We employ 3,800 people at this facility, and we couldn't be more excited about our future investment in electric vehicles. So we've invested in the full spectrum of the market. Sedan, second SUV coming, and of course, electric vehicles. But frankly, as excited as we are about our growth, as excited as we are about everything we've done, frankly, it does happen with a partnership. And we have a very profound and powerful partnership with the state of Tennessee. And frankly, Tennessee has become quite good. Has become quite a powerhouse in and of itself. Nearly a million vehicles produced in this state in 2018. Obviously some electric vehicles, obviously a massive amount of investment. Now from someone who currently lives in Virginia and navigates Washington, D.C. and reads the headlines and experiences the headlines about politicians and what exactly they do all day. And I think you can get the interpretation that is bureaucratic, it's cumbersome, it's slow. I can speak very firsthand in all of my personal interactions with the representatives from Tennessee. It is fast, it is efficient, I think those things are fine, but most importantly, it's a partnership. And really all you want to have in life is someone who cares. Cares about your business, cares about your community, cares about your employees. And I can speak very clearly to all of you in front of me here. Thank you very much for caring. Thank you very much for being in a partnership with us, and thank you for everything you do to continue the greatness that we have yet to do. So, so with that, I know all of you would love to hear from every single one of them, but we just like to focus, of course, and have the 50th governor of the great state of Tennessee, Governor Bill Lee, come Woo! up and join us. So, governor I'd 
like to welcome and, uh, you know, how history works in this great country is who would imagine two people from Long Island would wind up here in Tennessee on this stage. But uh, Congressman Chuck Fleischman, Tennessee's third district. And of course, a warm welcome to Will Alexander, the son of a senior senator from Tennessee, Lamar Alexander. So, Will, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Scott. I uh, just want to make a couple of remarks. I, I want to reiterate the way you started uh, by thanking the people around the end of this uh, crowd here, the folks that work here, the hardworking men and women who really have made today possible. You also make it possible for a whole lot of other Tennesseans to benefit from your work because there's a reason that great companies like Volkswagen choose to come to Tennessee because we have great people here to fill the jobs. I I've traveled the world now and this country talking to other companies about the potential of moving their companies here to create jobs in Tennessee. Every single one of them asks me almost, first of all, every time about our workforce and the quality of workforce that we have and our educational system and its commitment to workforce. And, and we're doing some things like the Give Act to strengthen vocational technical education, but the truth is Tennesseans are a unique breed. And many of you are a part of reason why companies like Volkswagen came here. So thank you very much for what you do. Thank you. You should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of yourself and celebrate you today. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for all of your father's outstanding service in the United States Senate and as our governor. He just hit a milestone. Truly an outstanding statesman, Lamar Alexander. Thank you. I can remember vividly sitting at my desk holding a newspaper. And what did Volkswagen say? It's Chattanooga. I remember that day so vividly, and I knew it was going to be a game changer. But wow, in every way, the Volkswagen team, the workers, the management, our state partners, our local partners, our friends in the federal government, yes, we all work together to make sure that the Passat was a success. But guess what? Every time, Volkswagen had an opportunity to look at Chattanooga. Volkswagen, Chattanooga, and the workers all came through. Outstanding. Give yourselves a round of applause. And I'm going to be brief. 3,800 jobs, 12,000 indirect jobs. We are truly making our great state, and I really believe, Governor, we have the number one state to do business in in, in in this country. I have seen other people say, tell me about the Tennessee miracle, and it is a Tennessee miracle. Please continue to do this. As long as I have a voice and a vote, I will stand with you all. I will reduce regulations. I will reduce taxes. I will make sure that we have the most fertile ground to do business because given a level, level playing field, not only Americans, but those special Americans called Tennesseans will always lead the way. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here representing my dad, Lamar Alexander, and have a short statement from him that I will uh, that I'll read. When Volkswagen came to Chattanooga in 2008, I said that this was the ideal marriage between one of the world's most admired companies and one of America's most livable cities. That turned out to be true. Since then, Volkswagen has built 800,000 cars and SUVs here, and Chattanooga has been named one of the best places to visit in the world by the New York Times. Congratulations to Volkswagen's leaders and the 3,800 and Chattanooga employees for this announcement of the new Atlas Cross Sport. 40 years ago, Tennessee had virtually no auto jobs. This announcement reminds us that today, auto-related jobs are in 88 of our 95 counties, one third of our manufacturing jobs are in the auto industry, and uh, Tennessee's become the most attractive state in America for new auto jobs. 
We also should be grateful for state and local leaders who had the vision to create the environment for Volkswagen to succeed. They say that marriages that survive the seven-year itch last for a long time. I'm certain that this ideal marriage between VW and Chattanooga will celebrate many more happy anniversaries. All right, all right. Okay, so the name of the game, of course, is SUVs. And a lot of people don't know this, but of course we have a little bit of history uh, in making these family vehicles as well. Uh, obviously you can see some tongue-in-cheek from the 1960s, and obviously from someone who was uh, sort of adhered to Catholic schools, the nuns bring back a few few too many flashbacks of uh, keeping me in mind, but uh, it all worked out in the end, so I should thank the nuns uh, for getting me here. But of course, if we look at Volkswagen, we look at the market, SUVs is the name of the game. Here in the United States, 54% of the light vehicle market is SUVs, and obviously it's our business and our jobs to meet that marketplace. While Volkswagen may have been a little late to the party, a little late on the curve, with the great work in this plant, we have closed ground dramatically. Just to give you some perspective, a few years ago, 14% of our sales came from SUVs. Fast forward to today, 52% of our sales come from SUVs. T1 is our number one selling car, and I'm quite confident the Atlas will be right around the corner to becoming our second best selling car here in the United States. This is a massive swing, but if I zoom in on the Atlas itself, what exactly strategically is this car doing? First and foremost, 84% of the people buying these vehicles have never been in a Volkswagen before. This is our chance to introduce people driving these very sad vehicles of Toyota and Nissan and Subaru and everything else <laughs> and show them the magic that we can do. Woo! Convince the driver to go up. Yeah! Yeah! The second thing, of course, that's important is, of course, we like to make a little bit of money and we like to succeed. This vehicle alone has increased the average transaction prices of a Volkswagen nearly $4,000. So this is a vehicle that's winning in the marketplace, and that's exactly what we want to do. Now, it's not just my promotional craziness that's saying it, it's also USA Today that's saying it. The hot list, Atlas number two, you can see there, sales are up 40%. So this has become an iconic vehicle only in the marketplace a couple of years. And thank you again for everything you're doing to put us at the head of the list and at the head of the charts with this vehicle. Now, as we look at everything that happens here, it's not just about the United States. I think the magic of Chattanooga and the magic of Tennessee, and I think no one around the world would expect this, it's also becoming a powerful export hub. So of course we send these great vehicles to Mexico, we send them to Canada, we send them to Russia, we even send them to the Middle East, here from little old Chattanooga. Woo! Powerful statement around the world. Yeah! And of course, we name a car, but a car has massive knock-on effects. 1,600 components per Atlas, 428 tier one suppliers here in Chattanooga and spread across Tennessee. So the knock-on effects of the magic of what we do in this plant is profound and obviously extremely powerful. Now, specifically about the car we are going to launch. As you know, this is a huge segment. That's why the Atlas is so successful. 2.2 million vehicles are sold in this mid-sized segment of SUVs. And if you look at it, frankly, it breaks down into two, in our opinion, distinct segments. You have the seven-seaters that you see there, you can see the Explorer and the Highlander, and of course you have the five-seaters in this segment. The five-seaters comprise 45% of the market. And as a businessman, there's no way I want to miss 45% of the market. Maybe 5%, maybe 6%, nearly half the market is five-seaters. When our product planners looked at it, when our strategists looked at it, and we looked at the opportunity here in Chattanooga, this is the opportunity that we want to, and this is the opportunity that we will pursue 45% of the market that's growing, that's profitable, and it's obviously healthy. As we also look at this market, there's one thing to just look at the math, and look at the market opportunity, and look at the numbers, but of course, we see a massive social opportunity. I think it's no debate right now, people are far more connected with their devices than they are with society. And we think this SUV and many of our SUVs that we make are a massive social opportunity. This is an absolute social utility vehicle. 
Atlas, as you remember, is something that used to take people around the world. I An mean, Atlas is something where people set dreams and set places in perspective, and where will I go today, and what great things will I do today? Well, that Atlas has now manifested itself into a vehicle, and that's exactly the opportunity that we see. And this car is full stop built to get you there, and it's built to get you to connect, not connect on a device, connect with society, your friends, whether you're going to the woods, whether you're going to the city, whether you're going for an adventure, or you're going for a breakfast, whether you're going with your kids, this is the vehicle that you want to show up in. And if you think what a vehicle purchase, that's exactly what it is. It's a signal to show up. And again, at school, at a cocktail party, at business, at an event, I am showing up. But of course, it wouldn't be Volkswagen. For us, it is about showing up. It's not about showing off. It's that smart, value-oriented Volkswagen positioning that gives you one hell of a great car, gives you one hell of a great value. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at it. Introducing the all-new Atlas Crossport. Activity, you need space. More legroom and cargo space than the Grand Cherokee. 40 inches versus 38. Significantly more cargo area than the number one selling five seater. So this is a massive competitive advantage. Looks good, has the latest tech, and of course that has the space that Americans are desiring. And of course, on top of that thing, you need the performance. 
V6 four-cylinder turbos. Of course, the four-cylinder now for the first time will be available with four motion all-wheel drive. And finally, you have to price it competitively, and I assure you, this vehicle will be competitively priced. You deserve to have a stunning vehicle. You deserve to arrive in this type of vehicle, but it's one thing to do it at $70,000. It's a whole other thing to do it where we belong in the $30,000 price range for this vehicle. Now, thank you. Now, of course, before I close, you know, obviously these vehicles do not build themselves, as I've been saying. We are surrounded by the employees who really bring their passion and bring their precision to bring this vehicle to life. And we've been discussing with the governor, we are extremely proud to bring 1,000 additional jobs in the building of the electric vehicle and, of course, in the building of this Atlas Crossport. So together with the hundreds of thousands of Volkswagen employees around the globe, this is a powerful strength and an asset that we have. It's an asset and a strength that we want to continue to take advantage of and continue to show the magic that we are capable of. You know, and if you look at the brand ourselves, I think there is one thing to make a vehicle, there's one thing to sell a vehicle, but for us at Volkswagen, and this is true around the world, we always want to do more. We want our vehicles to honestly become vehicles of change in and of themselves. It's not enough to make them, and it's not enough just to sell them. So in light of that, what we are doing today, and right now in this plant, we have nearly 100 veterans who are working in this factory. And frankly, I could not think of another group of people who embody this higher purpose we are aiming for as a brand. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And if you tell this story quite simplistically, this uh, tall, skinny guy who looks a little bit lost in this picture is my father. Uh, a kid from Brooklyn who went into the military, and frankly, when he came out, America had opportunities for him. He pursued those opportunities. That's how I got here. That's how my five brothers and sisters navigated the world. And that's, of course, how he went on to purchase a Volkswagen Beetle that we all went around town in. But it's a country that had an opportunity for him when he returned. And that's exactly what we in America need to continue to do, that we have these opportunities when our veterans return from service. We have a responsibility, but I think we also have a massive opportunity to do that. In order to bring this to life, we are announcing today a partnership with Hiring Our Heroes, and to me, it's quite straightforward. We want to and we will recruit veterans for all of our facilities across the United States, whether it's a factory, whether it's a dealership, whether it's a port, whether it's out our headquarters. So this is the magic, and this is what we want to do. quite clear. Something big is creating good jobs. Something bigger is using the tools that we have at our disposal to create opportunities for people who've earned it more than any other. And that's exactly what we intend to do. So in closing, straightforward, thank you very much to the press, to all of the government officials, to all of the magical employees who make this great brand happen in America. Thank you for joining us. We told you about a great car. It's here. We told you about a great brand, and of course, we told you the great things we want to continue to do here in Chattanooga. And Governor Lee, if you please come up and join me, Congressman, let's take a couple of photos and celebrate this great car. Thank you very much.